I would like to bring to order uh, the uh, policy committee of the National Board of Education at 6.02 p.m. We are at the Nashua High School North Boardroom, Wednesday, August 14th, 2019. Okay, uh, Mr. Garino is here. Mr. Mosher? Yeah. Mr. Mosher is here. He's joining us by telephone. Are you by yourself, sir? I certainly am. Okay, Ms. Van Twyver? Present. Okay, also present is Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Kaufman I, is joining us by telephone. Are you by yourself, Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Thank you. Also, we have Ms. Kinsella and Mr. Lasad. Okay. All right, so our first, in fact, our first agenda item is policy EB, which is a safety program. Um, this, we had discussed this. It, went back to Mr. Lassard to look over and he has a uh, he has a, a little a text here to um, a little memo here for us. Um, would you like to speak on this Mr. Lassard? Sure, good evening. Um, the reason why I made the comment that I would remove the addition from the last policy meeting is is because um, our emergency operations plans years ago when I came on board were kind of all over the place where schools were all doing different things. And where that becomes a problem is, is when you have staff members that either move buildings or maybe they work at multiple buildings during the school year, that can get very confusing when schools are doing very different things in regards to their emergency response. So what we did was over the years was, was basically come up with a, a template where the emergency response actions were pretty much the same for all the schools. And then obviously each school will have its own little different um, things to put in the plan. Um, so that was the reason why I recommended that um, we remove that sentence. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Van Twyver. The whole sentence? Or shouldn't there something be said? Um... Um, so the sentence says the committee will be responsible for developing the emergency plan for each school. Um, I would remove that. That's what I'm recommending to remove. Okay, I misunderstood you. Thank you. Mr. Moshe, do you have any uh, questions or comments? Uh, not in particular on this, uh, on this, that, uh, uh, you know, we're getting some standardization into the district, so. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty clear and happy with the way it is. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kaufman, do you have any uh, questions or comments? I, yeah, I do have a question. So, Ms. L did, did, they ha did Ms. Lassard provide something to the group tonight that was not in the packet? No. Okay, so the EB proposal is what is before the committee right now? Is that right? Yes, it is. And there's a memo that he had, which is also... Uh, provided with that packet. Okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. I wasn't sure uh, based upon the comment. Okay, thank you. Did you have a comment, Ms. Um, okay. So with that, I don't really have any questions or comments. You said that the emergency response actions are the same for all, and that, that is reflected in this, you're confident that that's reflected in this policy? Yes, um, so the state requires certain standards when it comes to emergency operations plans. And actually in the, the last few years, uh, districts are actually responsible for submitting those plans to the state so they can review them and also make sure that the, the districts you know, are covering certain criteria that they, they want followed. Um, so it's my job to make sure that the plans are following that criteria. So if there's any changes, I will make those changes to the plans to satisfy the, the needs of the state. Um, every year the principal needs to go over their emergency operations plan because staff change, the amount of students, that stuff all needs to be updated. Emergency phone numbers, um, things like that. They then submit it back to me. I have to make sure we're meeting everything that we need to meet. I forward it to the National Police, Fire, Office of Emergency Management, as well as the superintendent, and they have to sign off um, 
on those memorandums of understanding for each emergency plan before um, we send it back to the state. And also, you also you have it referenced at the bottom too, what with the state uh, uh, the state rules. So, so I think that's that's straightforward. Um, Mr. Guarino, when you get a chance. Sure, go ahead, Mr. Kaufman. Thanks. So there's no report to the board here. It just says these things are going to be done in each school. The superintendent's going to know about it, have a copy. But there's no notification to the board that, in fact, this thing, these uh, have been updated and submitted to the state. So I would appreciate something in this policy that says, you know, once these things are current and updated and they're updated and on file in the office, that the board be notified that this is, in fact, done. Because otherwise we wouldn't necessarily, the policy should indicate that the board will be notified when these things are updated annually. Um, go ahead, Ms. Van Twyver. I have a question about the last sentence. Um, is it in your job description that you would review all these plans and submit a report to the superintendent? It's in my job description that I work on emergency plans. There isn't something specifically in the job description that mentions that after you review the, the, the EOPs that or some type of letter or report goes to the superintendent. Um, again, the superintendent needs to see them in order to sign off on the memorandum of understanding. Yes, but if it's not in your job description, how would, you know, how would a new person know that they had to do that. I mean, you would probably assume they asked a question, but then you know what assume does to most of us. Yeah. Um, I would either suggest a statement in here saying that these reports will be submitted to the superintendent annually or have it put in your job description. It needs to be somewhere so that people understand that this has to be done every year. That's my only suggestion. Go ahead. I think it would probably be more appropriate to put it in the policy versus uh, a job description. I just feel like you'd be able to go back and find this more easily than, than a job description that isn't available to everyone. Well, they're, they're supposed to be posted online. I asked um, Ms. O'Gara for one today. I didn't get a response, but that's not on, yours is not on there. But um, maybe it's something that the policy, the HR committee has to look at. Um, to make the change and make sure that it's posted because I think what the board, what the uh, web page says that they're added when needed, so. Mr. Mosher, do you have any um, more comments or questions regarding what, what, what transpired? Yes. Go ahead, sir. I don't believe that we need uh, a report to the board on this kind of activity because this is in the policy and the policy is reviewed every year, and it's, uh, we don't need any kind of micromanagement to, uh, just to add to some other papers to somebody that's going to uh, look at it and throw it away. Uh, I don't think we need that. The policy says it all, and I think we go by the policy because the policy, if it needs to be updated, will be updated. And uh, it also mentions that Mr. Lassard is the uh, the uh, in the director's position or assistant director's position, and this uh, falls within his purview. And uh, that's, as long as that's the case and it's in the policy, what do we need anything else for? Mr. Go ahead, Marino, Go ahead Ms. Van Twyver. Um I don't know that this board policy is reviewed every year. Is it a requirement? I don't think so. Yes. Uh, what do you mean, yes? <laughs> is that what you said, Mr. Mosier? Yes, because I think the, uh, he, the inspection of the schools he's he's is not, an annual thing. It has to be right, done. Right. It has yes. to be recorded. Right. He's, he's talking about the, the, the uh, emergency plans, not, not the policy. Well, that's not the way I understood it, but okay, I'll accept that. I still think that something needs to be said either in this policy or in the job description that the written report is submitted to the superintendent and even mention the other people that you send it to if it's a requirement uh, should be in there, but that's just my opinion. So, so that's the last sentence that was taken out. Do you think you should be put it back in? Well, I, I, what I think it should um, the assistant director of plant operations, safety, and security will, yes, I do, and yeah, submit a that, written report to the superintendent. Right. right. How, do you, how do you feel about that, um, Mr. Mosher, the last sentence? 
which reads, the Assistant Director of Plant Operations, Safety and Security will review all school emergency plans and submit a written report to the superintendent annually. Do, do you think we can add that back in so that when, when the, Mr. Lassad um, uh, goes over all the, uh, uh, the uh, emergency, uh, that he submits a report to the superintendent, you know, that it's complete and, you know, w w uh, fills him in on what's going on. That's the last sentence. Uh, Ms. Van Twyva believes we should add it back in. How do you feel about that? I think if it makes Elizabeth happy, we should do it. Okay. So, Mr. Marino. Okay. I, I think that the board is, uh, the committee is unanimous on adding. Mr. Marino. One, one, mo one moment, please. I think uh, I would I would go along with that too, um, to to add the last sentence in, Mr. Lasad. That that written report. I mean, basically, you write a memorandum of understanding, right? And 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 you you do talk to the superintendent. This just puts it in the policy that that you're you're talking to the superintendent. It doesn't have to be an elaborate report. Like a, it could be a, you know it could be a memorandum uh, a memo, uh, just reporting on on the salient points, the important points. And that, that understood communication is going on. So I, I think that we're we're all in agreement that we should add in the last um, last sentence back in. Go ahead, Mr. Kaufman. I, I would happen I happen to agree with what you guys are talking about in terms of adding the sentence. And I would reiterate that I think not only should the the director, assistant director of plan operations send it to the superintendent, he should also send it to the board. Okay. The we, board or, should okay. have. I mean, when you consider we just spent six million dollars on safety updates, right? Um, you would think that this is something you want to keep the board aware of on a regular, in this case, annual basis. It's just a matter of. I my original request was to notify the board that it was done, but now that you're putting this sentence back in, there's going to be a report that should be given to the board, and that should be in the policy. Okay. Thank you. Um, so. I'm going to entertain a motion that we uh, approve policy EB um, with the stipulation that we add in the last sentence that says the assistant director of plant operations, safety and security will review all school emergency plans and submit a written report to the superintendent annually. I'll second it. Okay. On the motion, um, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Uh, motion carries uh, three to zero. So we approved the policy as it is, but we added that last sentence back in. But thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay. I've got a question before he leaves. Sure. Um, we just got a report on the uh, number of times the police have um, come to the schools. Is that part of your annual report ever, or is that something new that because I asked for it, we got it. No, that that was something that's new. Okay. Um, I think it would be wise to consider that. I, I don't understand what happened in, I think it was March, that caused the police department to come twice, uh, two times to the schools uh, rather than one time. But I can actually probably help explain that just because I, I work closely with them. So around that time, there was, I just want to be clear, there was no threat. There was not necessarily a specific reason for it. Um, the chief at the time basically just told all the, the sector cars that you are to make at least one stop a day in the school. Um, you, depending on the school, sometimes that sector officer would stop in more than once. Um, there's also officers that work in a, a larger sector, if you will, that cover multiple schools. So that officer was told to go to the schools as well. So that's why in some cases you might have had two officers, two separate officers coming the same day. So that's why the numbers went up. Thank you. I just wanted an explanation of that. I'm very glad that they are attending the schools twice a day so that the students get to be familiar with them and understand that they're their friends and not their enemies. So I think that was a good idea, but it just seems strange that all of a sudden, instead of getting just one, not even getting any, but then jumping to two, uh, in a school was kind of stuck out in my... No, and I could see how it would. It was just uh, purely 
proactive policing, and I can't say enough about the National Police Department and, and their involvement. They've been great. Well, they're my buddies. I've always thought well of them. I attended the uh, citizen school and I was very impressed with them. And I, when I ever I talk to them on, like if I go into the Apple store, I always make sure I talk to them. They've always been very polite and uh, I don't have any problem with our police department. I, I feel the culture has been changing in the schools because, you know, a few years ago when you would see a police cruiser parked out front, you know, you'd have parents get nervous, you know, what's going on in the schools. And over the last year, with their presence increasing, it's kind of normalized the police being on campus, and you don't get those calls, or at least not as many of them, wondering what's going on at the school. It's kind of just assumed now that the officer's just checking in to check checking in. in. Yeah. That's very good to hear. Thank you. Okay. So we are moving on to our second uh, item on the agenda, which is Policy JJJA, and this is the Student Extracurricular Activity Eligibility Academic Expectations, and it's, it describes um, the, um, the ex expectation, the academic expectations for students when they're in extracurricular activities. They have to meet certain levels. The only change is, would, would you like to speak to this, Ms. Kinsella? Sure, um, thank you for having me. Uh, Lisa Gingras, our Director of Athletics, couldn't be here tonight. She is hosting New, uh, Nashua High School South's preseason meeting, which is um, all of the parents, the athletes, and um, the coaches. So she has well over 300 she's working with tonight. So um, the reason for the revisions um, is uh, basic housekeeping of, and Lisa being as attentive as she is, um, realized that a program that was written into some of these policies is no longer valid. Um, so she wanted to rewrite these so that they were up to date. So she brought them forth. Um, the program is a team accountability program that was grant funded um, to support academic struggling athletes at middle school level. Um, that is no longer available. I don't have a reason. I can certainly find that out for you. Um, but it's no longer available, so she wanted to take out um, all references to that program. And that would be for JJA, um, JJA-R, which is the procedures for that policy, and JJB. Uh, JJJB-R um, did not mention middle school, so therefore that policy wasn't brought forth. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, does anyone on the uh, committee have a question or comment? Yeah, I mean... Go ahead, Mr. Mosher. Uh, page three. Yep. Uh, on the uh, the third paragraph there, end of trimester grading period, uh, I think this is just an oversight on somebody's part. But it's, uh, you know, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, five or six lines down. And it says if there is one or a fewer... Uh, failing grades. How can you have fewer than one? You can't really. <laughs> I'm trying to find where... Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. When the next trimester's progress report grades are distributed, if there are one or fewer failing grades... Yeah, how can you have fewer than one? You could have zero. And then I, will, uh, oh, a student will regain eligibility. A student will regain eligibility for all extracurricular activities, excluding athletics, when the next trimester's progress report grades are distributed if there are one or fewer failing grades. So if they have no failing grades, they can, they can uh, regain eligibility. Or if they have one failing uh, grade, they can... Uh, yeah, well, that, that seems to, you know, strike me as being kind of silly. How can they have uh, one or fewer? You could say one or no failing grades. Yeah, that, that's true. That, that makes, that, 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 that's more straightforward when you say one or no failing grades rather than right. fewer. Cause it, 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 Correct, Mr. Gorino. Yeah, so we can change that if, if anyone... Well, are you sure that's the intent? Maybe this was rewritten, was written incorrectly. I mean, maybe um, maybe they meant something else, like 
fewer than three or fewer than two. I mean, why would anyone say there's fewer than one failing grade? Okay. Well, that's because, uh, they, and, you know, this is a very difficult uh, uh, policy to write, and uh, it's possible to make a, uh, uh, you know, a little faux pas there. So, I mean, that's, you can always add that extra word in there, and that, uh, fewer, zero, uh, like Mr. Guarino said. And right. then, uh, uh, on the next uh, line, two lines down, uh, it says student may or may not be allowed to participate. Now, either he is or he is not. That, that's true. At, at progress report time, depending on the length and end of an athletic season, a student may or may not be allowed to participate. That's um, right. Oh, it's either one or the other. Uh, I, I think that I think I think that needs to be um, qualified, uh, and I yeah. think what they're trying to say is that uh, a student regains eligibility for extracurricular activities, um, excluding athletics, if if they when the when the trimester's progress progress report grades are distributed, if they if they no longer have more than one um, failing grade. However. Depending on the season, whether it's baseball or, I guess, or football season, maybe that's what they did. Oh, uh, that, they would have to, uh, you know, uh, rewritten, be, uh, put some qualification in there. Yeah, I, I, I agree, um, but I'm not exactly sure how to do it. At progress report time, depending on the length and end of the athletic... Oh, it says right here, depending on the le length and end of an athletic season. Okay, so, so what they should say is... At progress report time, a student may uh, may be allowed to participate depending on the length and end of an athletic season. That's the way I would write it. All right. Well, that's pretty good. That's, uh, I, I would accept that. Okay. At, at progress report time, a student may be allowed to participate. You don't even need may not. You just say a student may be allowed to participate depending upon the length and end of the athletic season. So that means that whether that that what whether or not that student plays depends on the athletic season. Okay, let's go with that. Okay. And then uh, I have another little thing. I'd just like to rewrite this part here. Uh, under definitions, it says participation in athletic. Uh, in, Pardon me, I got to put my glasses on. Participant, uh, participation in scholastic or interscholastic events includes practices, meetings, participating in scrimmages, competition, performances, extracurricular activities, etc. <clears throat> it also includes travel to and from such events. Uh, could we just uh, hike that around a little bit and say uh, participation in scholastic? Interscholastic or extracurricular activities, etc., uh, includes travel and from events, and uh, includes practices, meetings, participation in scrimmages, competitions, performances, extracurricular uh, performances, activities, etc. Okay. I, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I would make those changes. Um, the uh, athletic director wrote this the first time, and right. um, I think her wording is there for a reason. Um, That's under def the, definitions. Under definitions. On, on participation in scholastic or interscholastic right. events includes practices, meetings, participation in scrimmages, competitions, performances, extracurricular activities, etc. Yeah, and, well, you can move the extracurricular activities up into that uh, first line. Uh, so that you would have uh, uh, scholastic, interscholastic, and extracurricular activities. Right. So, so it, I, I think I think that's that's acceptable. So participation in scholastic, or oh wait a minute, oh no, because it's got that's all of those things. It's participation in scholastic or interscholastic events, extra 
events. In and extracurricular activities. And extracurricular activities. Yeah, I, I, I think we can do that without really changing. No, we don't have to change anything else. Right, right. You're really not changing the... the um, what we're doing, though, is making it a little easier to read. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Okay. Okay, that's all, all the comment I have on Everything else seems to be in good order. Okay. Unless we want to really go over it with a microscope. But I don't want to do that. Ms. Van Twyver, do you have any? No. Mr. Mr. Coffin, do you have any um, comments or questions? No. Okay. So, Mr. Uh, Green, go ahead, Ms. Con I just suggest that if you're going to do that in A, or JJJA, that we also make that same um, correction under definitions in JJJB for consistency sake, under okay. participation. So we'll okay. carry those same um, changes from participation over to B as well. Okay. okay. Well, you're over my pay grade, so it's okay. When, when we get to JJB, we'll do that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Okay, so um, I will entertain a motion to accept JJJA with those changes. So I'll move. Okay. Second. Okay. On the motion to accept JJJA with changes, um, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Motion carries three to zero. Okay, J, 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 A, with changes. What's that, J, 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 A, R? Yes, so our next item is J, 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 A, R, and that is uh, associated with J, 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 A, it's the uh, procedures and, um, also, it's, it's, determine, it's determining academic eligibility. Ms. Kinsella, do you want to, um, do you have anything to add to this? Or? I believe the changes that were impacted here, again, were just um, based on the fact that the middle school program uh, accountability program is gone, mm -hmm. and just some probably cleaning up of wording um, uh, right below the grade um, bar there. So. Okay. Okay. Does any uh, one on the committee have any questions or concerns with JJJA R? Not for me. No. No. Then I will entertain a motion to accept JJJA R as um, as presented. So moved. You got it. Okay. Second. Okay. Okay, on the motion, uh, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Motion carries three to zero to accept uh, J, 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 A dash R as presented. Okay, we're moving right along. We're at J, 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 B, which is students' extracurricular activity eligible behavior expect expectations. Uh, Ms. Kinsella, same type of... I would say the same here. Um, okay. And as we discussed earlier, we'll take the changes that Mr. Mosier suggested for participation and mm -hmm. implement those exact words so that it's consistent. Okay. Mr. Mosher, do you have any uh, questions or comments? Nope. Ms. Van Twyver? No. Okay. Mr. Kaufman, do you have any questions or comments regarding JJJB? No. Okay, I will entertain a motion to um, accept 
uh, J, 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 B with the one change, uh, moving the phrase extracurricular activities to the first line. Okay, so I'll move. Okay. Second. On the motion, um, Ms. Van Spiver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Motion carries three to zero. Okay. And our last item on the agenda is the proposed JICL student cell phone use policy. Ms. Kaufman, do you want to talk about your, your um, policy? Yes, thank you. Um, I wish we could have done this when school was in session so the parents and the staff would have some input to it. And actually, I would ask that the committee defer a discussion until the school has been reconvened because staff needs to comment on this. The teachers need to comment on it. Parents need to comment on it. Essentially, uh, cell phones are a distraction in the classroom. I think that's an undisputed fact. I know from my experience as a substitute teacher that uh, cell phones rule the day. Uh, at any point in time, two-thirds of the class, half the class is, is on their cell phones checking something and not paying attention to the instruction. And my purpose here is to give the, is to empower the staff, empower the, the teachers to have the authority to take, you know, control the classroom relative to the use of cell phones and how they're used in the classroom. So that's the purpose, is to help the teachers manage the class with uh, the effect of, of these cell phones, which just really undermine instruction in all sorts of different ways. Mr. Mosher, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, I have a comment on uh, one small part of it, but uh, I think I'll wait until we, uh, we redo this with the input from the uh, teachers. Ms. Van Twyver? Uh, yeah, I have a lot to say about this. Um, okay. We took this subject up in great detail when I was on, when I was on, when I was the policy chair a while ago. And there was, we, the only thing that we could come to was that, um, well, actually, I don't remember that we did have a, a solution to the problem at all, but there was a lot of controversy about being able to use these cell phones in the classroom as a teaching tool. Uh, and then there was a lot of talk about teachers who were afraid uh, that if a child was not uh, paying attention and was playing with a phone, that if they took the phone away from them, they could be accosted or whatever. They, they were concerned about that. So um, in my estimation, I, still, I think that um, this ought to be brought up with the teachers again and see if you can come to some solution um, I was not able to get that solution at the time, so I remember talking to um, a gentleman at the Manchester School, and their solution to the problem was that it would come under classroom management, and, and uh, so um, that's, I think that's about the way we left it. So I am against you keeping uh, students keeping their cell phones. I think it is a big distraction. And um, I don't know how you would, how you would uh, be able to uh, fix it so that teachers could use it as a tool, and yet, you know, it doesn't uh, distract the student from being a, an attentive student. So it'll be interesting to You're hear it again. Correct. Yep. Mr. Guarino? Um, one minute, please. Um, I don't think we need this policy at all. I think it's... Um, I, I think it's not necessary. I think it's re in some ways redundant to our existing policy. We have an existing policy on cell phones. Our existing policy is that our teachers, and I, I agree, I agree that cell phones are a distraction. Um, however, 
our teachers have the authority right now to take the cell phones from the student if they, um, if they deem that the student is upsetting the class or, or interrupting the class. So they have the authority to do it already. And what our existing policy on cell phones say, says is that they can hold on to the phone until after school hours and then give the phone back uh, to the parent or the, or the, or the child or the student. Um, and I think the way we, we deal with it now is uh, a good, it, it's a good policy the way we have it now. Uh, I think that this is just making matters worse. It's adding more government, more bureaucracy. Um, if, you, if you say that, Ms. Van Twyver actually said it, that you know, students have to keep their phones in their lockers, I, I think there's a lot of parents that aren't going to be happy with that because you know, if the child is at lunch or on other times not in class, they want to check on their child and they're concerned over their child and that's the best way to do it. Also, these cell phones cost a lot of money and if we uh, have them in the locker uh, and they're stolen, uh, you know, our w district might be uh, liable for them. So I, I think don't f try to fix it if it ain't broken. Um, if we want to have a discussion, uh, further discussion to improve our existing policy, I think that's good, but I think that this policy in itself is ill-advised. Mr. Garino? Um, go ahead, Ms. Um, Van Twyver, and then Mr. Kaufman wanted yeah. to talk. Um, I would like to know how you're going to go about getting responses. At the Ed Council that I sat in on, the one uh, representative of the, of the high school said that the teachers were afraid that when they would try to take the phone away from the kid, the kid would beat them up. So um, I don't know whether that has, voice has changed or not. Um, I'm hoping that it has and that maybe they know better how to control the classroom. But um, I mean, I, I can't, I can't go along with limiting the, uh, using the tool as uh, an education tool, but um, we didn't come to a, a good solution in my estimation, but yeah, I, good luck. I, yeah, I, I, think, I think that if, if, a, if a teacher is threatened by, um, by a, a, a student because they say, you know, your, 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 your cell phone is interrupting my class, it could be, it, it doesn't have to be a cell phone, it could be something else. It could be a disruption in the class for some other reason or some other, some other thing. We had things in classes, kids would bring footballs or whatever, and teachers would take those, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And um, if, so that's really not a cell phone problem, that's a, a, a the teacher has to understand that, that that teacher is not alone, okay, that shouldn't feel threatened and intimidated by anyone, no matter how small that teacher is, that we shouldn't have that kind of environment in our schools, okay? It's not the cell phone that's the problem. It's the, um, it's, you know, the teacher has to maybe need some more training and, and understanding. Um, go ahead, Mr. Kaufman, your turn was next. Thanks, I just wanted to say Brentwood currently has a policy where there are no phones so I would suggest that when we do discuss this again, we ask the director of Brentwood to come in and share with the committee, with the board, the public, how they do it over there. Because I remember when I was there last year, they said, yeah, after two weeks, the kids get used to it. And, uh, you know, and they, they have that environment. They've established it. Granted, it's a smaller school, many fewer kids. But the fact is there is a precedent in the district that it can be done. I appreciate you taking it up. Um, I mean, it sounds like the uh, members of the committee want more discussion with parents and teachers. So I, I hope you'll schedule this for next month and uh, we can bring those folks in. So well, thank you. That, that Brentwood is actually operating under our existing policy, which is it's up to the discretion of the teachers or the administrators. So, um, so we don't really need another one. They're not actually working outside the existing policy. And they, they did, just, and they did not actually need a new one to do what they did. So um, I, I'm certainly willing to have a discussion on this, but I'm not, I, I think this, 
I, I, I think you're going to have a lot of pushback on this policy here. It's not really uh, well advised. I think parents are not going to be happy that they can't contact their, their, their students. And especially with emergency use, look at what it says regarding emergency use, that parents, in the event of an emergency, parents shall contact the office of the respective school. Staff will notify the student of the receipt of a message. Emergency messages shall be delivered promptly. That, that, defies, the, that defies the definition of an emergency. If there's an emergency, a student, uh, a parent is going to want to talk directly to their, their student. They're not going to want to go to the office and have the office notify. If, if, if there's an emergency, the office is going to be busy taking care of the emergency, not, not busy sending out runners to, to, to contact students. Uh, so it, to me, it's not really well written or it's, it's kind of ill-advised. Non-emergency messages shall be delivered no later than the beginning of the next academic period. I mean, it, it, I, I don't understand that, that phrasing at all. Um, I, I just think the way, for, for me, the way I look at things is that it ain't broken, don't fix it, okay? It's not perfect. The, the existing conditions now are not perfect. But we give the discretion to the teacher and we have a policy where the teacher can say, all right, any particular student is disrupting my class, whether it's a cell phone or something else. You're going to stop doing it. We're going to take your cell phone away. But that cell phone is private property, and some of these pieces of private property are very expensive, and the, and, and the parents are not going to be happy if the school takes it, if something happens, or it gets lost. So I, I think we have to be very careful, and I... And, and, and I, and I uh, when we write something, it has to be much more well thought out. I'm not against having us discuss a discuss this issue, but I, I just don't think this policy does it. Can I just make one last statement, if I may? Sure. So that's how I think it is in elementary school, right? Kids don't have cell phones in elementary school, typically. Uh, unless I'm wrong, I know when I sub up in Merrimack, the kids don't have them in the elementary school. So, and if there's an emergency, someone comes from the office, or, you know, quite frankly, there's an intercom, you know, would you please have such and such a student come to the office or whatever. That's normal procedure in a school. So I, I don't, you know, uh, just want to say I'm happy that we get a conversation. I want the teachers to know that the board is concerned about their plight and wants to offer assistance somehow. And I, I think we might get some recommendation uh, if, as you move forward. So thank you again. OK. Does anyone else have any questions or comments regarding this, this issue? Ms. Kinsella. Hi, I just recommend that if you do bring it back, you don't do it in September. Your, your next meeting in September is the first week. I believe it's on September 5th, which is the day after Labor Day probably won't give parents and teachers enough notice, so possibly your October at the latest November. Okay. Okay. Amen. Is there any other comments or questions or business for us tonight? Uh, with that, I don't believe so. I will, uh, I will uh, um, take a motion to uh, adjourn. I move to adjourn. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. On the motion to adjourn, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. We are adjourned at 6.45. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Van Twyver. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Mosher.